Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, in this one we're going to show you how to shuffle the numbers in a vector. I needed a vector that had the numbers 1 through 10, but I didn't want them in that order. I wanted them in different order every time I played the track. So I wrote this script to do that. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so here's the vector. This side over here is what sets the vector. Um, here's the vector. Here we have a set vector event, uh, a set value event, a variable, and a generic filter. Now, the set vector event, its index is using a variable, its value is using another variable over here, which I will show you in just a minute. Okay, now we have a set value event set to increase by one and its event target is the variable and the filter goes on to this generic filter testing to see if this variable is past nine which okay so what it does what this is is this is what it's setting so it sets the very first value which is the zero index in the vector sets that value and then it increases until it gets to the end and then it turns off this part over here. This part over here is powered by this interval trigger. This interval trigger is set to one, one to have a tick every tick, and it does not disable. All right, here I have it turned on with a state event. Now, right here I have a random data source. This is set from one to 10. These are the numbers that you want to be in the vector. Its interval is one, because I want it to be picking fast. All right, so its seed is set to an object info data source, which is set to speed, and I'm using the rider as the object. Now, the reason that is is because uh, you need to reseed this every time you ride the track because you want it to pick different numbers. Okay, so here I have a set value event. Its value is the random data source. Its target is this variable here. Now, this variable here is the one that we're wanting to put into the vector. This is the number that we're trying to we're comparing against and we're going to try to put into the vector now here we have a get vector now this is getting the number from the vector and it's using an index of a variable now this is kind of like that thing we did in the first part where we had a loop so what we have here is a variable set to zero we have a set value event set to increase by one and we have a set value event set to set to zero and both are pointing to this variable now we have a, a generic filter here. Its comparison valuable value is that variable, and it's comparing it to nine. So that means that we've been through all ten of the positions in the vector. Now, what happens here is this impulse goes to this uh, filter, and this filter looks to see if now this is getting the vector has a uh, has numbers of zero. So this first number is zero at the index of zero and this variable is zero so this generic filter is seeing if those two values are equal and they are equal so it's going to set this variable to a new value according to this random data source it's going to set it to a new value then it goes through and it sets this variable to zero to start testing at the first position then it goes up and it tests so now this random data source will not equal this number because this number is going to be zero and that's going to be anything but zero. So it will not equal. So then if that's true, I mean if it's false, if it does not equal, then it will go here on this false. It will increase this number to one, test to see if this number is greater than nine, and then go back and test those two values again to see if they equal each other. If they do not equal each other, it increases this to two, make sure this is not nine, and continues on. If they do equal each other, then it resets this number and starts this back at zero and starts testing again. Now, it, this is a loop right here to test to see if that number exists in the, ve in the vector. If it does not exist, meaning this is true, this is greater than nine, so it's gone through the whole vector and hasn't found that number, then it will then set that number at this index, which would be zero, so that would be the first number. Then it will increase this number to go to one, Go up here, make sure that this number is not 9, meaning that it's finished populating the vector. If it, has, if it has not, then it goes here and it sets this to 0 to start the loop over again to test again. Now, that's pretty much it. Just loops through the whole vector, trying different random numbers until it fills it up. 
And once it's full, then this number is going to be greater than 9, so it goes up and it turns off this interval trigger. Now let me show you what it does. Now I have, I'm showing the icons so we can see. I have a bunch of get vector events which show you 2, 4, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 1, 9. Let's write it again. 7, 5, 9, 2, 10, 8, 1, 3, 6, 4. Write it again. So you see it's working just like I want it to. It's shuffling those 10 numbers within the vector. Now once again we're using these lights these spheres I'm lighting them up from using that vector like we did in the first part and then I also have the explosions down here at the end that will go off in a different order because the vector is different every time so that's pretty much it that's how you do it I hope you guys learned something uh, I know it's fairly difficult let me show you this screen again so you can just kinda look at this layout and see how this works if I can find it Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. It's um. It's like I said. It's just a loop. It loops through the vector to make sure that those random numbers don't exist. And if they don't exist, then it puts them in, and it eventually fills up the whole vector. So that's how you do it. Thanks for watching, and have a good time.